Thank you, Dr. Johnson. I have to confess I hope to live my entire life without ever reading the IMF statistical table 12A. Just let me be clear there. One, testimony is excellent. I had a chance to read it earlier this week. It was very insightful. I think to Dr. Olsey Eakin's point, the growth gap, the current recovery, and the, and the prospect, not reality, prospect of potential GDP falling permanently over the long haul is a concern of the Joint Economic Committee. And together, in a bipartisan way, we're going to look at ways we can close that, both on fiscal and monetary side as we go forward. I have a couple questions uh, I'd like to run through quickly. None of them are gotcha questions. and uh, We rarely have this opportunity with, with you four experts here. So uh, on making Social Security and Medicare solvent over the long term, critical to all this, timing. How soon should Congress and the President act to, to assure investors to avoid a potential downgrade to really address our, our financial situation? Senator, each of you, how soon should we act on reaching a solution? I think you have to act to so show seriousness of purpose as soon as possible. Uh, and when you do that, I think some of the growth issue is going to be addressed because I think the markets will respond as will <coughs> the investment community to that sort of action. Yeah, that agree. means setting up a definable process for getting to closure on an agreement on entitlement spending and on revenues. Okay. You're thinking this year or next? Oh, this year, but this, this year, year before June, hopefully. Thank you. Dr. Rivlin? For Social Security, I would say 10 years ago, uh, but this year will do. Uh, the, <laughs> we've known about this problem for a long time and haven't fixed it. Uh, on Medicare, I would say right now, uh, we are still learning about how to improve the efficiency of health care, but I think uh, the uh, accumulating knowledge gives us enough to go on right now. Got it. Dr. Holtzegan? I don't have a clever way to impart a greater sense of urgency. I mean, it, the sooner the better, let's face it. And, and there's some demographic mechanics that, that make this an imperative. Uh, if, if you think about changing Social Security, for example, and, and there's been the convention of grandfathering the, those who are of a certain age or younger, 55 or younger, um, I'm now 55. I'm the trailing edge of the baby boom generation. If you grandfather me, you grandfathered the problem. And so the bumper sticker should be get Doug Holtz Aiken and get him this year. <laughs> we'll get that printed up. And you're talking about timing this year, act now, not now, you know, federal government, ten, 10 years. Got it. Dr. Johnson? Uh, well, for the record, I'd like to know that Dr. Rivlin has actually been warning us all about this since the 1980s. So it's 20, 30 years ago. And, and I, I think you, sh you should act uh, immediately. Why not establish a, a bipartisan commission along the lines of, of, of that established by President Reagan and Congress in, in the 1980s? 80s. Specifically, I would suggest to deal with Social Security. That is surely not an easy problem, but a problem where the two sides seem better able to come together. On, on health care, on, on our Medicare, that, that's, that seems more difficult. And uh, I, I agree with showing purpose w would be very helpful. Um, and if there are ways to take that away from the intensity of the partisan discussion, that would be extremely constructive. But I, I'm not sure I've seen that on the table yet. I mean, I agree. We, we ought to be sa we, we could save Social Security this afternoon. Truth is, we all know what needs to be done. Um, along those lines, uh, there's talk about change CPI in Social Security and some means testings in Medicare. Are those two reforms alone enough to make those programs solvent over the long term, or do we need to do more? Senator? Uh, those would go an inordinate amount of the way, but you should also adjust uh, the bend points, obviously, which is means testing and probably the age. Uh, and uh, Simpson-Bowles, interestingly, Simpson-Bowles, we decided to take Social Security out of the out of the deficit debate and the debt debate and, and deal with it separately. I understand Senator Durbin is suggesting that also. And there are only four or five moving parts. Yeah. They can be adjusted so quickly if you can get the politics to agree to do it. Yeah. And that's why doing it independent of the debt issue is I think so important to take the politics out of the issue. Uh, and it, and in my view if the Durbin approach was followed, it should be, sh that commission should report by Easter <laughs> and yeah. vote on it by, before the summer recess. Dr. Rivlin? 
uh, you need to do more. On the change CPI, uh, that's a technical change uh, which uh, would improve the estimate of uh, in inflation uh, in the benefits. But it need not be done in a way that hurts low income or especially older uh, people. Uh, in the Domenici Rivlin plan, uh, we did go for chain CPI, but we also bumped up the minimum benefit and a be benefit at age, I think, 85, um, so that you don't uh, disadvantage people uh, uh, over a, who live a long time. I'm increasingly for that. Uh, and on Medicare, uh, yes, you need to do both. And I'm not a fan of raising the age at this time, actually. Got it. Thank Dr. Holtz again. Well, I would concur. I think you need to do, do more, more uh, no question. Yeah. On Social Security, I think it's very important to remember that you're really not doing more. The current plan is that the, the program will remain actuarially solvent. And the way we're going to do it is in 20 years, we'll have essentially a Social Security sequester and across the board cut at 25 percent. That's a disgraceful way to run a pension program. And so it's not about doing more to Social Security. It's about doing something more intelligent and doing it now so that people can plan. Great. Um, on Medicare, um, I think the number one priority should be to uh, put it on a budget. Um, right now, the gap between payroll taxes and premiums going in, spending going out, is $300 billion a year. It's a third of our trillion-dollar deficits. Um, it's uh, got 10,000 new beneficiaries every day. So you have to send the signal to the provider and the beneficiary community that there's a certain amount of money, go do something smart with it. Right. And that Dr. would be the stop thing. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Uh, well, Congressman, as you know, we, on Social Security, we didn't uh, index the uh, maximum wage subject to Social Security. I would go back to, the, to what worked for Ronald Reagan. If it worked for Ronald Reagan, it, it should work for us uh, today. And on the, um, I think you, you, you should look at pension age, but you have to be very careful that while longevity on average has increased substantially, American males uh, age 65 are expected to live three years longer than, than was the case in 1970, that's not true across the entire wage distribution. Manual workers, lower income people have not, lower income males have not had an increase in longevity. And I think you want to be very careful about balancing those adjustments in, in that framework. And just changing the, the, the CPI it doesn't, doesn't, do, doesn't do that for you. Can on, I on Medicare... If you, I may, Doctor, I apologize. We're going to let you uh, step forward in just a second. I want to turn this over to Vice Chairman Globachar. But, but quick question. Um, a lot of talk about tax increases again. We've had a first round of about $1 trillion in the President's new health care law, half a dozen of which have kicked in this year. Uh, Republicans, Democrats agreed on $600 billion plus at the beginning of this year as part of the fiscal agreement. Absent fundamental tax reform, does anyone on the panel want to argue that another round of tax increases will be helpful to this struggling economy? Vice Chairman. Do you want them to answer? Uh, she got the answer I wanted, so I, I, you know, it's, I, I, like, I, it's like Moneyball, hang up, you know, <laughs> Vice Chairman. Thank <laughs> you.